So let's start going through the book. And there's lots of information. Um, if I just start again, leading up to actually sitting down and typing commands at the terminal. And I thoroughly recommend reading all of the book or as much as possible. Um, and then going back and start reading it again and start reading it in a bit more detail. Um, the initial reading, you might sort of gloss over a lot of things because it don't make sense or then um, don't quite understand stuff. <clears throat> but on a second reading, things will start to fall into place and you'll want to read things in a little bit more detail. It's not absolutely necessary to read the actual compile instructions, although uh, maybe looking at some of the more complex ones such as GCC. Um, or glibc may be of some interest to get an idea of what happens. Uh, chapter 7 uh, gives you a good idea of how the transition from the temporary tools to the final system starts to take place. Um, there's also a, a very detailed and very technical read on this link here, Toolchain Technical Notes, which explains the uh, how the cross compiling works uh, it's kind of a fake cross compiling but the principles are similar um, that's uh, well worth a read but it is very heavy going especially if you're not used to some of the terms um, I did do some a slide or two on one of my videos I think it's one about cross Linux from scratch where I've, I've created a slide to try and explain the different stages that you go through when you're cross compiling um, so if you can track that video down it's a few years old now that might be beneficial to help um, understand what's going on um, but so the more more times you read the book the more, more you'll understand and likewise the more times you build Linux from scratch the more it becomes clearer what's going on um, building it once you won't completely understand what went on I can almost guarantee that unless you're some sort of um, prodigy or something or other um, you know you 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 know, Mensa member or something, uh, I've, I doubt very much that you'll uh, grasp everything, unless you're a, you know, maybe a, a long time Linux user and you're quite au fait with um, programming and so on. Um, but I assume not if you're coming here to do this, you probably know little about how uh, Linux works and how it's all bolted together with all the packages. So let's get going again then. So there's some history about how the project started. Oh, I seem to have some problems with this mouse. It seems a bit jittery, so hopefully it's not going to give up on me. Um, there's the audience that books intended for. Target architecture. So the officially supported ones are 32-bit Intel and 64-bit Intel stroke AMD or AMD 64. Um, it is known to build on other architectures, as it says, with PowerPC and ARM with some minor modifications. I have built it on a Raspberry Pi in the past. Um, and yes, it does need a little bit of tweaking, but it is possible to have it working on um, a, an ARM. And it mentions there uh, some figures about Linux from Scratch 9.1 on a 4000 series uh, Intel i7. So, um, well, it's a bit out of date. I guess some people might still be installing on that sort of architecture. Um, but obviously we're not doing 9.1 and it would have compiled quicker anyway. So I would guess if you were to build 12.2 on that um, CPU, <coughs> it would take a, a little bit longer than what's mentioned there and probably a lot bigger as well. So it uh, just gives you an idea. Whether this discrepancy has changed or not, I don't know. It could be possible. In fact, the way some packages are going, I'd imagine that they would compile a lot slower on older machines because um, CPU caches are getting bigger. So I imagine the code that's used to compile software is taking advantage of those larger caches. And if they were to be compiled on a CPU with smaller caches, they'll take substantially longer because basically all the code that's running wouldn't fit in the CPU cache at once. Um, but that's only uh, a guesstimate. It's not something I've observed. So prerequisites, some things that you need to know about or have knowledge of. 
standards, there's certain standards that the Linux from scratch tries to adhere to. Adhere to. Um, I did read a few weeks ago about Linux standard bases kind of stuck and as you can see it's stuck there at 2015 so whether that's going to be updated or whether that's just going to fall by the wayside and become meaningless I don't know um, but certainly the FHS and POSIX are other standards that are adhered to <coughs> so rationale for packages in the book uh, this is quite a useful page because sometimes you might think, well, why is, what's that package doing in Linux from scratch? That's not necessary to build a basic system. Um, but they give reasons here why they're required. Um, and this package has grown over time as um, a basic Linux system gets more and more complex. For example, I'm, I believe I'm right in saying that GCC now has a dependency on Python, whereas Python never used to be part of Linux from scratch um, and it's also used for some other packages as well so that gives a good explanation. Topography so this just explains how the book looks at different parts um, how the text looks depending on what it's trying to convey what information it's trying to convey so that's worth reading up on to get an understanding of what you're actually reading and what, what you're supposed to be typing in and so on. There's a quick overview of the structure of the book, the different parts of the building. So the main building part is part two, part three, and part four. Part two is preparation. Part three is the temporary area. We build some temporary tools in. And then part four is the actual system that will be the final system that we use, or that we boot into. So I've already mentioned that and security advisories. <coughs> So introduction, how to build an LFS system. So it goes into a bit more detail about individual chapters and what the individual chapters um, allow you to complete. Then there's a list of all the changes, what's new since the last release. So most packages get updated. There's a few that don't get updated. They're either because they're mature um, and there's very few changes or bugs to be found and very occasionally um, some projects go a little bit stale for a while uh, or fall by the wayside in which case they tend to get replaced by other packages um, so generally most packages get updated in between releases there's a change log with all the updates to the book Resources, um, some FAQs, many lists for help, IRCs, and mirror sites for um, getting packages and patches. If you want help, um, there are various places you can get help from, which are listed here. Um, I do get questions sometimes on my channel. Um, I do my best to answer the um, questions. I can't guarantee a fast answer. Um, I, I don't get a chance to um, reply that often. I do try and read all the messages um, that are left, good or bad, um, and I do try and help out where I can. Um, but as I say, you may not get a quick response. I don't read the messages every day. It may be several weeks before I get around to being able to read the messages, but um, I, I, as I say, I do try to read them all. Um, so if you do want a quick response to a you know, problem you've got, you're probably best off trying one of these other locations or there's a Reddit for a Linux from scratch. Um, there's mail other mailing lists, other fora where um, you may be able to get help a lot quicker. <coughs> um, also, when reporting errors, don't just report the last lines here. They're not particularly useful. You need to include everything from where the error was first issued um, because a lot of this is just a trace back through the various um, programs or various levels of nesting um, that uh, is, is being used during the compilation. So it's quite important to include as much information as possible. Otherwise, you'll find either people can't help you or they're just asking for more information anyway. So 
it's best just to be up front and give as much information as you can straight away.